Right, let's talk about the series test for alternating series um, and a little bit about its error term. Um, so uh, an alternating series might look like the sum from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n and then times uh, a sub n. So it's, it's as if we have uh, one sequence and then we're just making it alternate because uh, we typically look at the absolute value of the uh, nth terms, so it's easier to look at it this way. Uh, or you might see it written uh, as uh, negative 1 to the n plus 1 times uh, a sub n. Uh, either way, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the test has kind of three parts. Well, I mean, it really has two parts, but I consider it three parts, because the first part is uh, you should really show that the series alternates, which is usually pretty trivial, but you always want to be thinking about that, because if it doesn't alternate, you're not allowed to use this test. Uh, the second part of the test is that the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n, so that's the absolute value of those nth terms, or if you've written it the way that I've written it, just a sub n, which would be a positive term series, the limit of that series has to equal zero, so it must equal zero. So we're going to find that limit first, usually, because that's the easier of the requirements um, to show. Then uh, the next thing, the third thing, is that the terms of a sub n, so that's the absolute value part, or uh, the way I wrote it, just a sub n, they must decrease. Um, and really what that means is they must decrease eventually, because if it's doing some weird stuff for the first uh, 10 terms or 20 or even 1,000 terms, it doesn't really matter. If eventually it decreases, we can use a test. Um, if those three things are true, then the series converges. Um, but this is a test for convergence. So if those aren't true, it doesn't necessarily mean uh, that it's going to diverge. Uh, it's just if they're true, it definitely converges. So let's take a look at an example. Um, so our example is uh, from 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n over radical n. So if this wasn't an alternating series, if it was just 1 over radical n, we would know immediately this diverges, right? Because it would have been a p-series, p would be 1 half, it's less than 1, so it diverges. Um, but it alternates. So uh, step 1 is to just make sure that it alternates, and uh, we did. It alternates. That negative 1 to the n is going to make that happen. Uh, the second thing, we need to look at the limit as n approaches infinity of... Uh, 1 over radical n, and that is definitely 0, right? The numerator is a constant, the denominator is getting bigger, so it's got to go to 0. Um, so that's the second criteria. And then the third criteria um, is that we need 1 over radical n to uh, be decreasing, like so the terms of that sequence need to be decreasing, which again I would say is pretty obvious because uh, the numerator is remaining constant, the denominator is growing, um, so it's got to be decreasing over time. Um, so we can conclude by the alternating series test that uh, this series converges. Uh, what if you want to be really picky, though, about that decreasing part? The decreasing part is usually the worst part. So if we're going to be picky about it being decreasing, what we're going to do is let f of x equal 1 over radical x, which is x to the negative 1 half. And then we'll do this sort of calc 1 way of showing something decreases. Take a derivative and get negative 1 half x to the negative 3 halves, which we can rewrite as negative 1 over 2x to the 3 halves. Um, so the denominator there is always positive, so we have a negative over a positive, definitely less than zero. So f of x is a decreasing function, um, which means that, uh, you know, if we do f of n, so if we just use uh, the numbers, I can't even start at zero. That It should have started at one. That was my bad. Uh, anyway, if you're super worried about that, change it, so make it one to infinity. Um, but f of x is a decreasing function, so we've shown that. All right, let's look at another example. So from 0 to infinity of n times uh, cosine of pi times n over n plus 5. So this one, uh, whether it alternates or not, is not quite so obvious. So what I'm going to do here is make a table of uh, n cosine of pi n. So if n is 0, I get the cosine of 0, which is 1. If it's 1, I get the cosine of pi, which is negative 1. 2 takes me to the cosine of 2 pi, which is back to 1 again. 3 gives me a uh, cosine of 3 pi, which is back to negative 1. And in general, if I have n, I'm just going to get negative 1 to the n. So this is actually an alternating uh, series. So it definitely alternates, so I'm allowed to use the alternating series test. So I put a check there. Now I need to take a look at the limit as n approaches infinity of uh, n over n plus 5. And that is going to be 1, which is not 0. So that kind of kicks me out of the alternating series test. So what I need to do is use a different test. Uh, it doesn't mean it automatically diverges, um, but it's pretty close. So usually if you don't get that the limit is 1, the obvious choice to try is the nth term test for divergence. 
which says it is the, if the limit of the n term is not zero, then the series must diverge. Um, so let's take a look at that. And we already did kind of part of this limit, right? We already looked at the limit as n approaches infinity of n over n plus 5, and we saw that that was 1. Um, the limit as n approaches infinity of cosine of pi n, or, or just think about what's happening. So uh, you have this quantity that's approaching 1, and over time you're really just multiplying it by 1 and then negative 1, 1 and negative 1. So over time, the series, the terms of the series are just um, alternating between 1 and one, negative 1, which is not 0. Um, so the series actually diverges by the nth term test. So alternating series tests will test for convergence. Nth term tests always test for divergence. And uh, let's take a look at alternating series error, which is really uh, one of the easier things we can do. So the error involved in using an alternating series is at most the absolute value of the first term that you leave off. So that's very easy to remember. Um, commit it to memory right now and uh, never get it wrong. So let's say we have this problem. Uh, we want the error using the first three non-zero terms of the sum from 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over 1 plus n cubed. And we want to use that to approximate the sum. So we want the error if we do that. So we get uh, this thing is approximately equal to, so we plug in 1, then we plug in 2, and then we plug in 3. So the error, the absolute value of the error, is at most the first term left off, which means we plug in 4. So that would be 1 over 65 is the biggest the error could be. Um, so that's a little bit about alternating series. Hope you found that useful, and good luck.